This is a husband and wife, the previous owners of the property, and several months ago they informed the respondent that they were selling the property and that he would need to vacate and that he no longer had rights to the property. And then um, the concluding paragraph emphasized that the respondent did not inform her or her husband of the subletting situation and was supposed to move out. They have not been paid any rent by respondent for months. Respondent does not have permission to enter the property. Okay, I, I don't even have a notice from the owner saying that, okay, you don't have permission to enter the property. There's not, here's nothing like that. Are you still paying rent? I'm not, well, no. You're I'm not, not paying, paying rent? No, I'm not. If they needed to um, evict me or sue me, I would have documents that show you that, okay, these, pe these people are evicting me or suing me or whatever, or he would have something, and then he was lying to... I'm sorry, Judge. Uh, oh, no, go ahead. No, no, we need to know from the old owner uh -huh. and the new owner uh -huh. what the situation is between you and them so that we can fairly resolve that's, that's this true. case. Without that information, I'm at a loss to resolve this well, case. Like I said, I'm in good standing with the new owner. Don't give me the good standing. No, no, yeah. We, we, there yeah. is no new when lease. When was the property there's sold? No, uh, I, I believe in February, but there's, there's also no challenge either that, hey, I'm, I'm not supposed to... That doesn't mean anything that there was no challenge. Mm -hmm. So I only have one question on the counterclaim, which is what is the proof that he is responsible for stealing and damaging the car parts? On the date of the first break-in, there were four in total. I received first a call from uh, the plaintiff's father, Max, and uh, he s stated to me that David was in my yard. That's a lie. How did you know his father? His father actually lives on the property, and uh, we actually got to be friendly. Um, he warned me about what was happening on that date. He said, you better get over here. David and his buddies are tearing your yard apart. Just to put this in context, I'd like to call your attention to Exhibit A, page 3. This is not David in the photo. This is one of his accomplices from that day. Common sense asks, why do you need to wear a disguise? Why is he wearing Right, so it? what about this, Mr. Manika? It's ridiculous. I mean, <clears throat> I asked my father. He didn't do that. He's always been saying that my father called him and stuff was stolen. What was stolen? I don't know what he's talking about. What, what did I... How, how did I steal it? And junk cars? How, what can I, who what took this steal? photograph? I did. Okay, so where are the photographs of him stealing the property? Interestingly, some of the videos that he showed already, that was the, the video of me <clears throat> in the silver car turning around. Right. This, this is mid-robbery. So they were actually actively taking things out of my yard. I have receipts for some of the items. I don't have it for every single thing. The fellow in the photograph whose face is, is masked, do you know who he is? Yes, I know who he is. What is he doing there? He works for me. We were fixing the fence that he kept coming in and breaking into. Why was he wearing uh, uh, a mask? I, I don't know. I don't recall that, whatever. I don't really have anything further either. at this point. Mm -hmm. We're going to excuse you now while we deliberate in this case. This courtroom is now in recess. Go ahead and next seat. Frankly, in a court of law, the plaintiff would have the right to subpoena the current owner and the previous owner and immediately clarify the issue of his capacity to charge someone storage fees. And unfortunately, it wouldn't be fair to either the plaintiff or the defendant for me to resolve this case on the basis of hearsay. There is absolutely no evidence here that is strong enough one way or the other for me to make a decision. See, I don't have any issue. The defendant provided us the evidence that he had a valid lease agreement with the prior owners. So I would have no problem granting the claim for the months of December, January, and February because that's under the prior owner's tenure there. When, and, when, and it's based when, on his agreement. When was it sold? He said the sale went through in February, and I don't believe the defendant disputed that. So those three months, I think, are perfectly valid. I would be okay with that. February. I would be okay with that because for those three months, we're ruling pursuant to the agreement the defendant has. Mm -hmm. So what's three months rent? Right. 1650. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Good. Giving him the three months that would have been due under either of their agreements. Yes. And then for the defendant's counterclaim for damaged and stolen property, I believe that they did it because of the taking down of the camera. Yeah, and, and the friend with the mask, there's no reason. If I'm the plaintiff and I'm being falsely accused of destroying his property, I would put my own video camera up next yep, to his. I agree with you. Yeah, no Here's what we got. Right. The plaintiff has the, the, the responsibility of... To secure the premises. Securing would, the premises. Yes. And therefore, that, I would feel more whether he stole or not, he did not properly safeguard the premises. I, I, like, I really like premises. that. I like that angle okay. better. I can live with that. I can live with that. Award. On the defendant's part. I can live with that. And the receipts the defendant has provided amount to $1,655. So they're essentially equal. Nobody is going to owe anything. I, okay. I agree. We have a verdict.